hello! My name's Zekel O'Hara, and this is the Future Fiction Factory. So, welcome to 2024. 2024 is going to be kind of one of those years that takes us into an even broader, even more individualized AI writing experience. And so, as one of my mentors has said to me in the past, we might as well get this party started. So let's get this party started. What are we doing today? We're going to have a tutorial, a tutorial on how to create a story inside of Playground, AI, OpenAI's Playground. This Playground can be, uh, is also very much like the Playground that is inside of Open Router, where you get to put system prompts and different things in. So definitely it applies to almost every single large language model, whether you are locally hosting that same large language model or whether you are using one that is out in the in somebody else's computer, someone else's server, some server farm somewhere. Buckle up, because we are about to learn how to write a story with artificial intelligence inside of OpenAI's Playground. Okay, ladies, gents, and all those in between, this is what we're going to do today. We're going to create a story, something unique and uh, science fiction-y inside of Playground. Now, what are some of the biggest factors when you're using Playground? One of the biggest things is knowing which model you're going to use. So over here in the upper left, right-hand corner, you'll see that there is a thing that says model. So let's zoom in. These models are all different kinds of models, all from OpenAI. If, you if you're in Open Router or something like this, it'll give you a lot of list of a bunch of different kinds of models, all right? What we are doing today what we're doing today is we are looking at the latest and greatest. That would be GPT-4 1106 Preview. This is the one with the 128K context window. What is 128K context window? It means that that is the amount of memory that it can remember in one big chunk, okay? So if you put a bunch of information in there, it will look at that information in up to 100 tokens, 128 tokens. Now, this means that you get about 100,000 words, 100,000 words. They are, most novels are about 70, 50 to 70,000 words, okay? That's the vast majority of things that are considered novels. There are outliers, people like Stephen King and stuff like that, who write things that are much bigger. But this context can actually read something that is as big almost as The Stand. That's Stephen King. I mean, that's a big book, okay? So you can use this as a, think of it as memory. It is memory. All right. So now we're going to click on it. I'm going to zoom out. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to show you what this is. Now, temperature. What is temperature? Temperature basically means is the AI, has the AI decided it wanted to go crazy with the creativity? You are basically bumping up the ability for it to randomly pick words, meaning that if you decide to bump it up to 1.1, 1 1.2, 2, 3, 1.3, 2, 1.5, there are consequences. And those consequences are crazy talk. It will literally start gibberishing you, giving you actual gibberish. So what, we're, what we usually like to do is we like to keep it somewhere around one if you are just wanting it to kind of stay on the rails if you really want it to stay on the rails you want to pull it down almost to a 0.8 that will keep it nice and cool and pretty much do almost exactly what you told it to to a fault matter of fact to a fault now your maximum length we're going to call this now you can go up to 
4095 and I'm not going to do that today. I want to keep the responses a little bit shorter for the um for brevity actually. Now, we're going to uh you can enter a sequence and uh of where you want it to uh stop and all of that stuff, but the top P the top P is basically this is the 60% of the words that you it has available to it. And it uses those 60% of the words to pick. It, it picks from those 60% of the words, right? And if you use 100% of the words, it picks from 100% of the words. So if I have a very, very high uh, level of temperature somewhere in 1.5 to 1.7, even 1.8, somewhere around there, if I limit it, the top P down to 0.6 or 0.5, it works out really well for you. Why? Because it limits its ability to go off of the rails. <laughs> it gives you, it limits its ability to go off the rails, but it increase by, by having it in the high temperature up here, you can affect its ability to create on the fly, meaning it's more random but with a much more sort of regimented sort of way of doing things. So remember, this the temperature is very important. Keep it at one, take it down if you want to, if you really want things to be normalized. If you want a little more creativity, take it up, bump it up a little, and then you can do all kinds of things with the top P to either limit it or really give it all of the vocabulary. So. Now that we've gotten all of that straight with what this models, what these models do and how to use these particular levers in the quarter, let's go and create something, something fascinating. I don't know what it's going to be and that's what's so exciting. So let's jump right in. All right, this is Playground and we're going to create a system prompt. I'm gonna dictate that system prompt. You are a helpful assistant that is expert in fiction writing, period. You are more specifically a science fiction expert, period. You are versed in many different types of scientific literature, and you use this knowledge to help craft stories that are completely and utterly captivating. That seems like a very strong prompt. Now we could literally go into what a strong prompt is, and that is a completely different tutorial all on its own. But what I'm showing you today is how easy it is to craft the initial prompt that kind of gives you the persona that you want. You want that AI to act like something you in order for that to happen, you have to give its system, its base programming, something to work from, some type of some type of base personality for it to expound upon. Okay, now that it's done with this, we are going to go straight over to the user message, and we're going to type in, let's create a list of scientific tropes that lend itself to space opera and a little bit of action adventure and romance. Let's treat these all as the same genre and make that list. Let's take a quick peek at what it says. Certainly combining space opera with elements of action and adventure, romance brings a lot of exciting tropes to the table. Here's a list of scientific, oh, stargates, wormholes, psi powers, telepathy, cloning, genetic engineering. Let's see, is there anything that's singing to be mega corporations? Mm, space elevators, orbits, let's see. So faster than light, artificial gravity, now give me literary tropes that also go with this set of genres that seem to be all mashed together. Thank you, that's amazing. Now you'll say to yourself, why did I say thank you, that's amazing? It's because, it's not because I'm afraid that our <laughs> cybernetic overlords are going to one day look back on this footage and think to me, think to themselves, he did good by them. That is not it at all. 
What I'm doing is I'm affirming exactly what the AI needs. It, it needs because it's it's built literally built on a reward structure. When you, in order to reward it, you have to give it some kind of positive affirmation so it knows that it did what you asked right, and it will continue to go down that road. So by affirming it, by giving it a positive feedback, it gives me boom a much more comprehensive answer in the end. Not because I'm scared of it, but because I understand its systems. Okay, now let's take a look at some of these. Certainly the scientific elements provide, uh, provide the world building framework while literary tropes uh, help to drive the plot characters relationships. Here's a list, chosen one, don't wanna do it. Forbidden love. Uh, rage uh, rags to riches that might work that might work maybe a guy get oh yeah that might work star-crossed lovers the hero's journey space western betrayal and redemption found family found family the crew that grows to be a family which is a staple in space operas characters often <laughs> i love that family okay so let's go galactic empire tropes of sprawling cultural diverse and often authoritarian regime regimes fish out of water characters finding themselves in situations uh and worlds entirely alien to them all right i already built something with a dog before that brings a very unsuspecting park ranger into it but what is a What's a different one? I want something with some love in it. Um, no hero's journey, betrayal and redemption. Characters who start as antagonists and traitors and redeem themselves are common, often providing a robust character arc, influencing both action and romantic subplots. Okay, I'm starting to get a little tickle in the back of my head with that. How about a story? Frontiers uh, can the uh, featuring independent characters law. Maybe maybe a little betrayal and redemption and space opera. All right. Let's try that. How about a little bit of betrayal and redemption and also space western? Now, as you can see, I am going through the process right now of feeling out the story. Now, this has to feel right to me. This has to be right to me. In order for it to be right to me, it has to sing. So is it singing to me? Let's try the first premise. Let's see what it has. That This looks pretty good. Betrayal. And it looks like it's got a whole bunch of stuff in there. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to bump this all the way up. And on the next pass, I'm going to give it a lot of creativity. But let's read what it what it's figured out. Stars of Dust and Redemption, not on the nose at all. The setting, the story is set in a distant future, bordering on a slordic galactic empire. I'm sure that's a sloratical, sloratic. Anyway, the wild lawless frontier beyond, known as the Outer Verge, the dusty planet of Thorn End with, a rugged with its rugged canyons and sprawling settlements serves as a pivotal location reminiscent of the Old West, but with a cosmic backdrop. Quint Vega. <laughs> Finally, we got ourselves an original name. Quint Vega, once a respected commander of the Galactic Empire in uh, elite Starfleet, is now a scorned outlaw after being, oh, yay, 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 that's it, that's it. Okay, I love it, exclamation point. Let's play with this idea. Give me an entire treatment for this story, including subplots and characters, both ones that directly and indirectly deal with our main protagonist. Make sure that this treatment is in the form of a full report, including a breakdown of settings and locations we're going to turn the turn it up really really high and we're going to limit its top p and we're going to hopefully get a lot of claudish sort of writing out of it so let's see if we can do that and i've submitted it and now 
full treatment overview. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. And while that is over there writing, I, I wanted to say to all of you that this is going to be one of those years where we have a lot of fun creating stories. I am publishing this year and it is going to be exciting. So you are going to go with me on this journey and we're going to have ourselves a blast. Plus, I've got all these interviews in the can from the Future of Fiction podcast. I've got so many interviews right now. I don't know what to do with that. Can't edit them fast enough. So, and I was going to try and get out a bunch of them over the holiday, and that wasn't that didn't happen. So I apologize, but about that. But welcome back to the Future Fiction Factory, and welcome back to this writing extravaganza. Let's get back into the writing now that we have this straight. And all of this information is here, and we have a full report. Let's see what the report has to say. Stars of Dust and Redemption. Full story treatment. Overview. In a galaxy where the glimmering core worlds are overshadowed by the rugged, lawless expanse of the outer verge, Stars of Dust and Redemption weaves a tale of betrayal, camaraderie, and the quest for justice. The protagonist, Quint Vega, must navigate a path of redemption in a space western landscape that pits the honor of the past against the sins of the present. Main characters Quint Vega, the betrayed Starfleet commander turned outlaw, a stoic and skilled fighter with a strong moral compass. Solara Dane, Quint's former first officer and friend who appeared to betray him, but is secretly working to expose the Empire's corruption. Senator Korvax, the main antagonist, a corrupt and powerful figure within the Galactic Empire, responsible for Quint's fall from grace. Dr. Alara Moon, a tech-savvy specialist and old friend of Quint who runs a repair shop in Thorns End and serves as a key ally. Keel Wren, a charismatic and mysterious bounty hunter with a personal vendetta against Senator Corvax. Sheriff Jonas Tyke, the law in Thorns End, a honest man trying to keep peace in a place where imperial law means little. The, the Iron Stallions, a notorious gang of hoverbike riding outlaws that control much of the black market in the Outer Verge. Oh, this is very much like um, Book of Boba Fett. It has a lot of Book of Boba Fettish in it. <laughs> Boba Fettish. <laughs> yeah, I said that. And let's see. Uh, locations, themes, Thorns End, a bustling settlement in the edge of Imperial space, full of saloons, marketplaces, and the constant buzz of hoverbikes. Yes. Subplot, Solara's undercover mission, the Iron Stallions, uh, Doc Struggle, Sheriff Tyke's Law, Keelren's Vendetta, Mining Colony Uprising. Yeah, this is all working for me. Introduce Quince Vega's life as a, missionary, uh, as a mercenary in the Outer Verge. Yeah, this is all working for me. As a matter of fact, it really is working for me. I think I might write this as a project for everyone that is how you I, as a matter of fact i'm going to try and work up a whole sheet and make sure that they're in the show notes for this particular for this particular tutorial so that you have the so that you have the the system prompt that i used and all of the other accoutrement in order to you for you and every single one of my corresponding prompts after that so that you can build this if you want yourself in playground or open router or anything at all. My name's Ikello Herod. I hope that you would like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.